Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and finally getting around to reviewing The Serpent and the Rainbow. Don't bury me. I'm not dead. Now, I enjoy this film a lot. People say their favorite Wes Craven film is The Nightmare on Elm Street. I love Nightmare on Elm Street, but if I had to pick my three favorite Wes Craven films, they'd be Shocker, The People on the Stairs, and The Serpent and the Rainbow. Now, one quick note, I'm surprised this film only has a bare bones DVD. But I'm I'm surprised Shout Factory, Screen Factory, or any other companies haven't done anything special for this. Because the film was a decent sized hit, got some good critical notices. It's considered one of West Craven's better films. And when uh Shout Factory got was a deadly blessing, I'm like, really? That's the West Craven film? Not Serpent the Rainbow? I mean, I'd rather see on Shocker or People on the Stairs or this film. Than Deadly Blessing, but that's just me. But uh, Serpent the Rainbow came out around the same time you had a lot of these movies dealing with voodoo. For instance, The Believers with Martin Sheen, which I liked, and Angel Heart with Mickey Rourke and Robert De Niro, which I liked. But I would say out of the three, this would be my favorite. And it's based on a book by, I believe, an anthropologist uh, Wade Davis. Of course, they took a lot of liberties, but you know, loosely, loosely based. Even the lead character, his name is actually Dennis in, in the movie, played by Bill Pullman. And this film, I think, is just a, it's a creepy flick. It deals with voodoo. Granted, I know some people who are who live in Haiti says this film doesn't really represent Haiti as well as it should, or doesn't represent the art of voodoo. But it's, it's still a movie. I like the subject matter. I like the images. I thought it's creepy at times. Bill Pullman, I think, did a great job as the lead. And I know this film went through a lot of stuff filming. That's why I think a documentary on this film would be very interesting. Because when they went down, they shot some of this in Haiti. And in Haiti, you know, Wes Craven and the crew, they're dealing with there's bombings, there's, you know, people throwing stones at them, there's got to a point where they felt the lives were at risk and they had to, I think, film the rest in the Dominican Republic. And a lot of crazy stuff happened. For instance, uh, a lot of people got sick, very sick on the shoot. Uh, people had hallucinations. In fact, I believe the screenwriter, one of the screenwriters, it might have been Richard Maxwell, not 100% sure, but they actually, they visited this guy who was a sort of magician, and the guy went mad, like the screenwriter went mad, so mad that crazy, they sent him home, and he was mad for like four or five days straight, then he snapped out, and he didn't remember anything that had happened, the last thing that happened was visiting that magician guy four or five days ago. Uh, even Bill Pullman, you know, every, people were having hallucinations, Bill Pullman said he saw like a green cow with TV screen for eyes. I mean, a lot of weird shit happened. People were seeing a lot of crazy stuff while down there. So it would make a very interesting interviews as well as a documentary. Uh, but as for the story itself, like right off the bat, it, it's a creepy idea in the fact that there's this zombie powder that some of the ingredients include tetrodotoxin, like the, from the puffer fish, among others that make you appear dead, but you're not dead. So your vital signs are so low that a doctor can look at you and think you're dead, but you can still see what's going on, you still know what's going on, and it lasts for, I don't know, 12 hours or so, and then you snap out of it. In fact, in the opening, uh, they really use the locations well, Wes Craven and his crew, and you have this poor guy who is getting buried and his loved one is you know, crying for him, and you see this tear slowly go down the guy's eye, and like the guy knows he's being buried alive. His um, family member is up top, you know, crying over them, and nothing this guy can do. And then we'll have uh, Bill Pullman's character, who's anthropologist at the beginning. He's like in the Amazon or such. He's talking to a shaman. He sees sort sees his sort of spirit animal, a jaguar. But he also sees kind of what's gonna come. Like the shaman turns into this figure who you find out is the main bad guy, Zactus Molkai. 
Zachis Mokai has been a lot of stuff. I remember him from Body Parts with Jeff A, which he was actually a good guy in that, among other films. Um, and then Bill Pullman is pulled into the ground. Like, straight up pulled into the ground. He wakes up, and he finds his pilot's dead. He's got to get out of there. And when he gets back, he actually talks to a few folks, including Michael Goff, if that's how you say his last name. Uh, Alfred from Tim Burton, from the Batman films. I should say Tim Burton's Batman films and Joel Schumacher's Batman films. Alfred. He's in there, and he's one of the guys who tells Bill Pullman about how this person seemingly came back from the dead and must be a drug and go down there and see what's going on. And Bill Pullman does. While there, he meets a woman. He also deals with the secret police run by Zach Ismokai, the same guy who he saw in the Amazon, the, the Vision. And a lot of creepy stuff happens, and a lot of stuff that makes you feel... For instance, they talk to this guy, Kristoff, who is the guy that... I believe is the guy we saw at the beginning of the film. Who he talks about how he was buried alive and someone took his soul, so to make him do horrible things. Uh, Paul Winfield, that's an actor. Uh, he's been in a few stuff. They talk to him, and a lot of creepy stuff happens. Uh, Hallucination-wise, for instance, Bill Pullman. You know, one night he sees Kristoff and this woman in a wedding dress. He's wondering what's going on. The woman unveils and it's a corpse and it opens its mouth and a snake pops out right into Bill Pullman's face. Another moment later on in the film, there's this boat that comes that you actually see on the cover here. And there's the same corpse in a wedding dress and then Bill Pullman's at the door and things are going on and he it's like he's at the doorway and it's shifted without him knowing about it and now it's like the bat pulls in so now he's in a coffin and stuff is dirt is falling on his face and blood's rising up ready to envelope him and then he wakes up snaps out of it. Of course, at that time he snaps out of it and he's in bed with a, a dead woman. Uh, because the secret police want him out, especially his actors, Morkai, and they do these horrible things. Like, you have this one scene that always makes me cringe. They stripped him naked. They pulled his underwear down to his ankles and had him strapped to a chair. And, you know, Bill Bones like, what do you want, what do you want? And his actors, Morkai goes, I want to hear you scream. But Bones like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Ah! And Zach's Mokai, son of a bitch, says, not good enough, and slams a fucking stake, steel metal stake, this tall, you know, this big, right on his dick. You don't, you see enough of it, but you don't actually see it, but you, you get the idea, and any guy watch it literally crosses his legs. You know, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> fucking crazy shit. And uh, that's a famous line, you know, what do you want? I want to hear you scream, you know, from this film. But the bad guy does get a good comeuppance as well. But it shows him, Bill Paul and me and this guy, and find out how the powder is made and helps this guy make the powder. Then you go with this stuff with the secret police, like I mentioned. You have a little bit of a love story that he falls in love with this girl who's a, a doctor, Haitian doctor, played by Kathy Tyson. She does a good job in the film. They... You buy their little love story. Um, they both work well together, and Kathy Tyson's a good actress. She did well in this film. I really enjoy the score, you know, by Brad Fidel, actually. Brad Fidel from Terminator 1 and 2, Fright Night. Brad Fidel did the story. He did a great job. I remember there's a piece of music in this that actually is in the Jacob's Ladder trailer. Like, if you hear, like, a choral, ah, like, that's... I'm watching this, I'm like, I remember that music. Okay, that was in the J.J.'s Ladder trailer. But even the main theme is just a really well-done score by Brad Fidel. Really fits with the film, the dealings of voodoo and such. I don't know, the whole voodoo thing always was kind of a creepy thing because it's mysterious. You're never quite sure what it's about. You're never quite sure uh, how far voodoo does. Uh, it's one of those things that 
I know enough that I'm going to respect it and never mess with it, <laughs> never fuck with the stuff. But it, it's sort of still, even to this day, sort of mysterious, you know, what's it really about? It's stuff that you don't really want to deal with. At least I don't want to deal with. I'm fine with not dealing with it. And a lot of creepy hallucinations, which Wes Craven does a good job with, which makes sense because, you know, he deals with nightmares and first nightmare on Elm Street. And even ideas in, like, Shocker and stuff about, you know, what's real, what's not. And this was really up his alley. And a lot of stuff happens. Basically... He goes back home, and you have this really, again, really interesting scene where he's at this dinner party, and this woman looks at him, takes the glass to give him a toast, and starts eating the glass, like, <laughs> starts eating the glass and tries to kill Bill Pullman. So that's when you get Bill Pullman having to go back, and he wants to help, not only to stop this once and for all, but also to help this girl he fell in love with in Haiti. But the long story short, uh, he gets the powder in his face, and he has that says that line this year, you know, don't bury me, I'm not dead. And you feel really sorry for because you go you go through Bill Pullman's eyes on everything that's going on. The doctor looking at him and saying that he's dead, him being buried, uh, everything going to black, then him screaming and screaming, you know, wanting to get out. It's a really horrible. <laughs> thing in which you could picture yourself in that situation how would you be if you were buried alive and you know what's going on you can't do anything about it and it really gives a certain sense of creepiness at least to me about the the whole thing and then actually Kristoff the guy who uh, we saw earlier actually helps Bill Pullman out and again the film also deals a little bit with the politics of Haiti but it doesn't go full force it's not in your face with the politics, it's in the background, you get enough of it, which that was the reality of Haiti. There's politics and bombings and riots and stuff like that. And at the end, there's a riot, and Bill Pullman is trying to help uh, his woman and also help fight uh, this uh, Zaktis Mokai character. And it's sort of a battle, I don't know if you want to call it the battle of the minds or such, but you know, his soul's kind of been taken, he's being fucked with, and he sees like Paul Winfield and see him screen and pull his own head off and throw it at Bill Pullman or the chair that he was tied to and got did you know, slant you know, staked on, goes after him for a bit. He goes in a room and he thinks he's it's like he's going forward, but then it's like he's falling, he's he's gotta hold on. Ultimately he gets the upper hand, uses his Jaguar spirit that we saw at the beginning of the film to stop Zaktis Mokai. And then you get uh, an extended scene, which was a lot of fun, which maybe the, the first part was like kill Zaktis Mokai's body, but now he's got to get his mind. And Bill Pullman turns around and puts fucking Zaktis Mokai in that damn chair. And Zaktis Mokai goes, What do you want? And Bill Pullman goes, I want to hear you scream. It gives him just desserts and has the state jammed right into Zatis Mokai's dig. And sort of hears him scream and makes him get pulled down into the ground and sort of battle. Do what you want to say in your mind and hallucinations dealing with that. But uh, either way you look at it, it works well. I know this has sort of been all over the place, but what more can I say about this film? I think it's a very solid film. It's a very interesting film. has a lot of interesting backstory. They use the location of Haiti very well. I think the acting is really solid. I like the, the certain images that have explained the idea of being buried and, you know, I'm not dead. There's really a lot of good stuff. So, I really enjoy this film. I think it's one of West Craven's best films. So... Bill Pullman does a really good job. I like Bill Pullman as an actor. I've never been one of those guys who hates Bill Pullman. I always enjoy Bill Pullman. I think this is definitely one of his best films, one of his best acting roles. And just a lot of good images. So it's really good, creepy imagery, uh, a good story, solid score. The supporting cast does great. And... 
Very solid movie that deserves a special edition. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. That's the strip in the rainbow. Later.